And we are punching the live button and here we go. This episode of The Digital Drop is all about how we, namely Ross A. Dillon, got 250,000 Twitter followers with his gaming account, VGF Gamers. How did he do it? Zero dollars in advertising. Don't believe me? The man is revealing his secrets today. Check it out. This is the actual dashboard and analytics here. In February, he got 21 million impressions in February on Twitter, which is preposterous. Uh, he also got 15,000 link clicks, 35,000 retweets, 158,000 likes, 7,000 replies. I mean, VGF Gamers is just one of the biggest, if not the biggest gaming account on Twitter, other than Twitter Gaming's account itself. So how the hell did this man do it? Well, that's what the digital drops all about. We make working from home simple. We're working from home. Ross has been doing this for years. And Perrin, we have limited time here. We all have to go to work to our consulting jobs. Interview this man right now. Let's drop the secrets on how he got here, how he built VGF Gamers to give our audience insight. Go. Yeah, so this is, this is great because VGF is how AWOL, you and I both know Ross from the beginning. So I want to know, Ross, let us know the beginning of the story. Like, how did you start this account? Why did you start this account? And then we'll, we'll go from there. Okay. I started the account. This was August 2012. So it's been, gosh, nine years and change now. That's really weird. It actually started out. It wasn't, I never posted memes or anything like that. It was actually an account that was just dedicated to fun video game facts, which is the VGF part of it when I switched branding. But after about a year of, you know, posting seven, eight facts a day, it started, you know, organically growing, which we'll talk about that in a second as well. After about a year, I started to realize, okay, I'm out of facts here. I got to change up the strategy ASAP and go on and, and figure out a way to <laughs> How continue long did that growing. Were you like so, back? Like, uh, you know, it was, was about like a, a year. I, I think it was, it was about, uh, I think it was about five or six thousand tweets in. So whatever, wow. Whenever, whenever that would line up, it's I set like 50, 60,000 tweets now. Um, but yeah, so after that, 60, after I started running tweets. out of actual, holy crap. It's something around there. Don't quote me on that number. I don't know. Twitter used to keep track of that. I don't think they do anymore. Um, but yeah, and so you had, had to kind of change up the strategy, and that's when I started incorporating a lot more actual humor into the account, and that's what really started to blow up the account, just because, you know, there there's obviously been pages since the internet, since, you know, social media started on Facebook. I remember back in 2000. Like eight, there being groups that would share video game memes. So I'm not like I didn't start this whole thing out. I was just one of the first people to take it over to Twitter. And because at the time Twitter was growing so quickly and so frantically, it was a lot easier to pick up a lot of followers. There were a lot more people who were looking for every because when you pick up when the platform's growing, everybody's coming on. They're looking for new people to follow. They're looking for new content on this awesome new platform, Twitter that they're just hearing about. Gamers, you know, because I had already started, I was one of the first ones to come up in the search results. So a lot of it is just coincidence, but there's a lot of hard work that goes into it. A lot of people think that, you know, it's just here, you know, here's a meme, here's a meme, here's a meme, and stuff like that. But actually, getting the memes and stuff like that. And a lot of them I make myself, it, uh, it takes a lot of time and then actually scheduling them out and then, you know, engaging with your followers and stuff like that. It's, it's essentially a full-time job to run one of these, you know, major accounts. So if you're going to do it, you better be passionate about it and you better enjoy it. Hold on a second. You make a lot of these original memes. I mean, obviously you curate a lot of stuff you find around the internet. I, I was not aware that you made a lot of the memes on the account yourself. I thought you were just vacuuming up all of the most hilarious gaming crap on the internet and just, you know, curating the creme de la creme to the account. Uh, you actually make some of the content yourself. I mean, obviously you've gotten expertise over the years not, having posted not. tens of thousands of memes. Uh, that's really interesting, man. That's cool. Yeah, it's... It it's not, it's not near as many. It's maybe like one out of every 10 I post, but now it's over the past five years, people just send me this stuff. And, you know, all, you know, usually every day I'll have 10 comments, you know, 20 DMS, whatever it is, people just filling up my inbox 
with memes. And a lot of times they're the same memes over and over. So I don't even have to do much curation. But a lot of times when I'm seeing these memes, I'll, you know, you'll get inspired for a meme about that maybe a completely different game. And then, you know, I just go make it and toss it up there. So, you know, I, when I say it takes time to make the memes, it does. It takes more time to think about it than it actually does to make it and schedule it out. You wake up in the morning, you're like, instead of time to make the donuts, it's time to make the memes. And you just, you're a meme freaking factory. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what a my great job. meme factory right job. here in my home. <laughs> <laughs> so one of the things here, I think that that's obviously sets his account apart is how unbelievably consistent you've been operating it for what, uh, since 2012, right? So like nine years yep. and some change, this account has just been going consistently. But what... Did you notice, you know, is, it, is it in the analytics or from a strategy perspective, what set it apart on a growth perspective? Like what made it actually grow? Do you have like key observations there of things that you did that were causing the growth? Yeah, quantity. Uh, quantity and timing. A lot of people think, you know, you know, it's ironic because the quality actually doesn't mean anything when it comes to running a page similar to this. You can have, and I purposely a lot of times make very low quality memes just because they perform better. Quality means nothing. Sometimes that's it's the point the of the meme, you know, too. Yeah, so literally, yeah. it's literally the point of the meme sometimes. Um, but it's quantity, getting out as much content as you possibly can without spamming, obviously, but you want to get out as much content on a regular schedule um, as best you can. And then patience after that, it's patience. A lot of times, and you know, people will message me and I've talked to them to be like, Hey, I've been trying to create this page and stuff, but it's not, I can't get it going. I can't get any fraction. It's like, yeah, you've posted 12 times. Like that's not how, that's not how this works. Like you, you got to consistently <laughs> be putting out material and that's where a schedule, uh, and they have software like buffer. Uh, you can actually do it directly through tweet deck, which is owned by Twitter. And then you just start scheduling these out, find out the times of the day when your audience is the most engaged. And actually Twitter now has an analytic for that in their media studio. So you can go and see when the, when the majority of your audience is actually using the platform, adjust your schedule to them, to them. And then a few other little tips and tricks. One that I saw, uh, and I, I've been doing this since 2015. And I immediately, when I started doing this, saw it was about a 15% increase in engagement and we've talked about this before because the way Twitter works, it's organic on Facebook and Instagram, Instagram now more than ever, you're going to be, you're paying to have people see your stuff. Even if people like your page on Facebook and, uh, and it's getting that way on Instagram, that does only about six to 10% of your audience is actually seeing it because that's Facebook's business model. However, with Twitter, it is all chronological depending on how you have your timeline set up. Most people keep it chronological. So, a good tip is when you're scheduling out of tweets, most companies, most businesses, most people who do schedule out their tweets, which are most major brands at this point, they're either scheduling for the top of the hour, like uh, for instance, 3 p.m. or the bottom of the hour, which is 3.30 p.m. However, there is no data that has ever suggested that those are the exact times that people are on. So what you do then is just schedule your tweet for one minute after, 3.01. 331. And I saw a 15% increase in engagement just because of that, just because now I'm on top of the timeline above all the brands that have scheduled them stuff out and are competing with each other in that one minute time spot. I've got your numbers up on the screen right now. Is this what you did in February, which is where we have, uh, we just pulled up that month because it's completed month here. Right. This kind of scheduling tweak you've done where you post, you know, everybody else is an idiot and posts at the top of the hour you're posting a few minutes later and doing something different. Is this what helped result in this huge boom in activity and engagement and retweets that you got right here in your February analytics? By the way, this is the first time anyone's ever seeing the back end publicly yeah. on VGF Gamers. Thank you for sharing this. I really appreciate it. All good. All good. Uh, this is what a gigantic Twitter account looks like when you pull up your analytics. When, when I pull up mine, it says you got a couple thousand impressions. <laughs> when I pull up Ross's here for VGF Gamers, he got tens of millions. Is that scheduling change what boomed in February? Was that the main ish change or did you change anything else? Well, the actually scheduling to the uh, minute after the top or bottom of the hour, I started doing that back in 2015. Ah, uh, it so was that's been a long-term strategy for from, you. Okay. Yeah, that's been a long-term strategy. But in February, it was actually starting uh, towards the end of January, but February for the full month is when I started, you know, 
when you're doing content creation, when you're doing social media, you also have to look at what's trending, not just on the internet, but what's going around, what's going on in the world around you. This virus stuff started getting pretty serious. It starts, you start putting pieces together. Okay, maybe people are gonna have to start staying home. We don't know where this could go. So more people are gonna be using social media. More people are gonna be on Twitter all the time. So just knowing that I took the chance, it's not taking a chance, like I'm not losing anything by doing it. And I just increased my schedule. I believe I posted, moved it up to about nine to 10 posts per day. And that's not including, you know, just tweeting back and forth with people. And that did see, that was a major boost because it turned out to be correct. It turned out to be, and especially now more than ever, more people are online using social media. Um, there's people have a lot more time. People have a lot more time to digest video content, especially even if it's on the Twitter platform, which typically you don't have, you know, you don't get that many engaged um, viewers just because it's a timeline. Twitter, you're moving quick. You're not sitting around to watch, you know, a 30 minute video. However, now this is changing. Now is the time to be making these changes to your account. If anybody else is curious about running one, start doing that right now. Start increasing the amount of content you're posting up. And I'm not talking, don't post crap content. Don't sit there and send people off. Don't send links to people. Don't, don't be sending people off to, you know, these backend websites that are just clickbait because that's just crappy. That's what one of the reasons that Twitter's down so much is because so many people have done that in the past. So just focus on putting out good content, that people will like, and a lot of it. And it's really just as simple as that right now. And now you're not gonna get these numbers over time. These are numbers over eight years, obviously. So don't expect that, but this is how you're doing it. This is how other professionals are suggesting you do it. This is how you guys have suggested to do it. So if this is an interest to people that you know, you're know you wanting to start, create your own brand and using social media to kind of launch it, there's really not a, a more perfect time. and I, I almost feel a little bad saying that because of what's going on, but we have to call it what it is. Now's the time to do it. If you're wanting to, you know, uh, start creating a brand and start trying to make something of yourself on social media. I think a key takeaway here is if you do start it with what you've done, stay with this, like only go only start this. If you can stick with it for years, because on Twitter, this time period, and you got in on this, Ross, this time period early on when there was a ton of organic yep. growth, there is not nearly as much now. So mm -hmm. if you're going to do what Ross has done here, you're going to have to start and be incredibly consistent over, and I assume, at least for five years to even get close to this point. So that sounds like a lot, but realistically, it's almost exactly the same as YouTube. And it's almost the same as every other yeah. platform unless you're hopping to whatever new platform still has organic growth, which, you know, Instagram and TikTok are like the two that come to mind. And Instagram is like so far on the end of that path now. I have another question here real quick. I don't know if you hit this or not. What was your, um, how much do you just like post the content? Like you just schedule and post the content and curate versus like direct engagement versus like replying engaging with the followers, et cetera. Do you have like a system there? What does that look like um, right now? Yeah. Uh, you know, when content like memes and stuff, and, and this is, I know, we're getting really deep into meme talk here. Like people don't know how deep the meaning goes. Um, <laughs> memeing. <laughs> Tell us, please. If it, is, if, if it is a trending meme, a meme about something that is going on, like right now, uh, Perrin and I were just talking about this before we went on air, like the Tiger King memes. That's all the rage right now. Like, and that's just right now, how quickly this these fads go away. For instance, if I would right now just go and add a bunch of Tiger meme or Tiger King memes to my schedule and, you know, say they don't post a week or so from now, they're not going to do any good a week or so from now. So with trending posts, stuff like this, stuff that's happening, like, uh, you know, all the Mario remasters we just heard about yesterday, content like that, you have to post directly right now. You can't toss that into the schedule. If you see it, just go and post it. The actually keeping a schedule where you can just kind of load stuff into a queue and let it post automatically, keep that for evergreen content. Now, uh, to your question per se, what's the strategy as far as engaging with people? Um, admittedly, I'm not as great as that as I should be. I try to, I did this morning, I did last night. 
but you, you're getting hundreds of comments, so it's hard. I do read every single one of them, and I do appreciate them. I laugh at them. I love them. But, you know, it, it's sometimes overwhelming. But at what my schedule is, all of my tweets generally are scheduled out weeks in advance. Uh, I've, you know, messed with these memes, found them, people have sent them to me, I've created them, whatever, thrown them in a queue, you know, two or three weeks ago. So it's kind of a surprise still to me when I see what post. So then doing that, it allows me all the free time, all the time that I normally would be during the week, you know, curating content, creating content, stuff like that. That time can now be spent to actually engage with the audience. So how much time, uh, real quick, we have a couple minutes left. How much time do you think like per week you, do you actually spend on this account? So if someone's going to start an account and they want to be incredibly consistent and they want to replicate the success, how much time should they anticipate putting into it? Right. Well, up first, you're obviously going to put a lot more time into it just because that's how things work. Until you get in that flow, until you can kind of do this work subconsciously, you know, it's going to take admittedly longer, just like when you're starting a new job or something like that. So you have to be prepared to put in more time up front. But currently, right now, the amount of time I like, put into just, the Just to put a number week, on that, like an hour a day or so is like not a crazy expectation to get a Twitter off account off the ground. Like an okay. hour a day is at least what people would spend uh, just to give them an idea. Because I think a lot of people spend like two or three minutes here and there on their phone and post some stuff randomly. Like you're talking about like sitting down and doing this like a job, right? Yeah, yeah, I, I treat this like a job because I mean, I do social media marketing uh, for a living, surprise. But yeah, uh, you know, typically I spend, um, when I'm just focusing on the Twitter account and not like the podcast or anything like that, it's about, it's about an hour and a half, two hours a day at minimum. Okay. And there you go, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> so you need to spend some serious time if you want some serious results. Uh, you can't just like randomly, you know, retweet things and occasionally post a meme you found on Reddit. That's not going to grow your account to getting millions of impressions per month. No, you got to have a system no. there that, and, you know, where Ross, you, you, you go through, you curate and find all your content, you schedule it out, you take the time to do that, like, well in advance. So even if you run into any issue, you know, where you can't suddenly schedule for some day, for some reason, you're covered because you build in advance unless you're doing, you know, yep. unless you're adding some trending stuff in there. Um, man, I, so, and the story of this account, I, I like that we could talk about it today because this is how we all connected was AWOL and I were looking for someone to help us with gaming social media. And we went out and found like the best account out there, the one that we really liked. And we personally both really liked this one. And we were like, Hey, do you want a job doing more of this? And of course, the answer was yes. And then we've been working together for like, uh, what, eight years or so now. So yeah, yeah, it's been it's been fantastic. And, and the thing about this is, and also creating these accounts, it does give you an opportunity to network with other people like we've been doing like this is how like you just said, we got started. So building up the connections, and so much stuff that I've learned from you guys and other people has also helped grow this account. So don't put it all on yourself. Go out and network, connect with people, find out what strategies they're using, and then implement that into what you're doing. That makes sense, guys. We're going to have to do a multi-part episode on this. We just got into the origin story of VGF Gamers. But what we need to talk about, I think, tomorrow at 9 a.m. Eastern time is how you can apply these sorts of strategies in 2020, how realistic it is to grow a big Twitter account from scratch today, and I want to go into those very tactical items tomorrow at 9 a.m. right here on Twitter at Digital Drop Pod. For those of you that are catching this on YouTube or on podcasting platforms later, we'll put a link to that at the top of the description of the episode. We're just going to hit pause right there because we all need to go to work. Ross, you need to go manage social media. <laughs> Perrin, you need to go get some e-learning no. stuff <laughs> off the ground to go do some marketing. <laughs> and I got to go. I got to go do some production and live streaming. So thank you all so much for watching. We're going to go live again tomorrow, Ross. Thank you for letting us share your analytics with everybody so they oh, can man. see what the results of hard work are. I mean, tens of thousands yeah. of tweets over years and years and years is how you get here. So for those of you that think that you're just going to post a couple viral things and really grow or be able to shove hundreds of dollars per month into your Twitter account and grow, that's not the real deal. And we're going to cover that tomorrow and talk about what realistic expectations that you can have. So that was the digital drop for today. 
we're making working from home simple, we hope. And we'll hope to see you tomorrow in the live stream. Thank you so much for watching. And feel free to drop your questions in chat in future episodes. Any closing thoughts, gentlemen? Um, I want to see Tiger King. Nothing that. worth having is easy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Tiger go look King at Tiger King memes. Closing memes. Track yourself, Aaron. <laughs> Animal Tiger King memes. Jerry Springer. <laughs> All right. Sounds good. Have a great day, everybody. Enjoy working from home. And remember, hard work and hustle is how you get there. See you later.